As video games get more cinematic, so does their music. A handful of bleeps and bloops are now 100-piece orchestras. For those of us who still get the Super Mario World theme stuck in our heads, there's a style of music that's been flourishing just under the radar since the late 70s. And the tool you need to make it? It's probably buried in the back of your closet. Today, on Indie Android. Chiptune is a style of music created through the sound chips of old video game consoles like the NES, Commodore 64, and the Game Boy. There's something novel about composing music on a device running on AA batteries. Chiptune has its roots in hardware hacking and the demo scene, which saw people embracing the limitations of outdated tech to make audiovisual demos. People have often said that Chiptune felt like an underground movement, like taking these video game consoles and repurposing them to do something new and something interesting. That's Aaron, a.k.a. Defense Mechanism. He's an Indianapolis chiptune artist who composes all of his music on his Game Boy. I think it resonated with me because, like, as a child of the 90s, I grew up playing Game Boy and NES, and so that kind of spoke to me, and I knew about, like, different 8-bit music that was being created on the Internet. When I was looking around for chiptune in Indiana, one of the things that came up was this show called Little Sound Assembly, and it was a festival that my friend in Evansville had put on for the past four or five years. Seeing Chiptune perform live was, I think, really what got me into like taking it seriously because I had the cartridge and I had the Game Boy, but I was just kind of playing around. But then once I saw like what is really possible to do on a Game Boy, it really like opened my eyes to see, wow, these people are making really amazing stuff. Since the Chiptune sound started popping up via groups like Yellow Magic Orchestra, there's been some debate as to whether Chiptune is a genre in and of itself. I tend to think of Chiptune more as a style uh, than as a genre because you can have like Chiptune metal or Chiptune EDM or Chiptune jazz or Chiptune punk. Like there are lots of different genres that can be evoked within the umbrella of Chiptune. To get that sound, Aaron uses a program called Little Sound DJ, or LSDJ. The software kind of opens up the sound chip of the Game Boy to use it as a synthesizer. Basically, lets you do whatever you want. You can use any unmodified Game Boy. Like, I definitely started on the Game Boy that I played as a kid, but you can also get fancier. The Game Boy screen is known for probably ruining a whole generation of kids' vision, so it's nice to have like a backlit screen. So this is LSDJ. This is the software that runs on a Game Boy, except for right now we're running it on an emulator. You see here we've got these four columns. Uh, these each represent a channel of the sound that you can make on a Game Boy. So you have two pulse channels, a wave channel, and a noise channel. The pulse channels make your typical kind of bleepy bloopy sounds. Wave channel can be used to play custom waveforms, so there's a synthesizer. It allows you to control parameters like uh, different waveforms. Um, you've got filter parameters, cutoff, and, and so on. And then the noise channel, it, it makes noise, so it's useful for percussion. If I'm making a song, a lot of times I'll have kind of an idea in my head of how the melody should go, and it might kind of imply certain chords or certain bass lines, and then I kind of just sketch it out in LSDJ. Even though the Game Boy has only four sound channels, artists have little tricks to get around those limitations. One of the most idiomatic techniques in chiptune is to use arpeggios. You play one note of the chord at a time, and chiptune composers started doing this to kind of evoke chords when they didn't have the ability to play three notes. They would have um, one note that's playing each note of the chord really quickly. So, so you've got this. And then I put a lead in the wave channel here. Writing chiptune music is time-consuming, granular work, but it's work that brought Aaron to play shows around the state and around the world. It's brought me in contact with people that I probably never would have met before. Um, I traveled to Europe to play. 
I played in Denmark one year and then the following year I was invited to play back in Belgium and France and this year I'm going to Tokyo and I don't think I would have ever had these opportunities had I never gotten into chiptune. I mean it's impossible to say but it's brought me into contact with a lot of really great people and I'm really happy that I started this. If you want to try your thumbs at chiptune, the buy-in is pretty small by nature. Apart from the software, all you really need is patience. I think really all you need is a copy of LSDJ and the manual and a willingness to experiment. Um, it's really easy to start making sounds with no knowledge whatsoever and it's, a, it's pretty easy for any beginner to get into. And if it's been a while since you've switched on your Game Boy, feel free to steal the batteries out of the remote. We won't tell.